Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here. Check out the series. You know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite uh, artists. And I was so excited today because I've been such a fan of Slowpoke now for the past few years. Emily Massey is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, this this new record, Yard, I swear it was, uh, it, I mean, I know it landed on some best of lists. It's been one of my favorites that I've been listening to over the past few months. Uh, I, first off, I just want to say congratulations because, you know, there's no guarantees, right, that it's going to be great. And yet, here you are. You all have done it. That is so kind. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a few months now that the record's out and it, it still feels surreal that we were able to make it happen, I guess. <laughs> well, and and things keep on moving. I mean, I want to dive into the record here in a minute, but um, but just also seeing the news lately that you all are going to be uh, touring once again with Death Cab, but it's the it's the Death Cab Postal Service tour this time around, right? Yes, it is. We are just beyond excited to to join that tour, and um, yeah, they're they're so kind to us. We can't <laughs> believe that we uh, we get to do it again with them. Yeah. Now that you've, you've toured with Death Cab before, you know, it's the obvious question here, right? Is like those albums, those two albums, we're talking about Transatlanticism and Give Up. I know they like they were two of my favorite records. They're so they mean so much to a lot of people. Were these part of your musical DNA? Oh, my gosh. A hundred percent. We especially Death Cab for Cutie. I think we all grew up listening to them and um I, I think it definitely informs our own music in so many ways. And um, I think even more so as we've gotten to know them as people and toured with them, we just were influenced by them in so many different facets, not only through the music, but just how they are together as a band and how they are as people and their live performance. And um, yeah, they're just, they're just incredibly inspiring. And we're absolutely honored that we get to, share the stage with them and call them friends. It's it's really quite wild. <laughs> Never thought I would say that, that's for sure. I'm excited to see that show. I I thought I was going to have to miss the tour because it just didn't hit around me. But now that it's coming to Nashville later this year, yep. I'm so excited to see everybody on that one. And, you know, it, it, it also makes sense because hearing the way you all have talked about this new record with Yard, I'm, I'm looking at a quote I think you said here. A lot of the songs that you could pin back to influences for most of this record relate to those radio hits um, that were in the early 2000s. Oh, like, yeah. Like, it's interesting, too, because how we hear the record versus how probably you hear the record. Like, you hear the record. You hear the work in the record. Do you hear the influences? Like, I, you know, when I listen to it, I, like, I hear a band very sure of themselves, but I can't always pinpoint maybe who you were listening to or calling back to. It is Like, do you hear those moments still when you're listening to it? Yeah, and I think um, it's it's definitely maybe a little bit more subtle than what people might pick up on. Um, I think some of the songwriting, those in in terms of songwriting, I guess those songs, those types of early two thousands hits, were um, that were big when we were kids. Those were that's maybe some of the most formative music for us because it's it's some of the music first music that we discovered on our own, maybe without the help of our parents or, um, you know, when you're a kid and you start hearing songs on the radio and then you start delving into their music more. And um, I think that that's just something that stuck with us. And I think we let that kind of guide what we were making. And um, <laughs> going back to Death Cab, actually, which is funny, um, Henry, who plays guitar in Slow Pulp and also produces all of our music, um, he was watching the OC every day pretty much for like months and just like blasted through all of the seasons and um Death Cab is a, is a big band on that on that show they talk about it and they actually I think play a few times on the show and um Phantom Planet's theme song for that um for that show there's a demo version specifically which is funny and random but that Henry talks about being kind of like the the main point of of contact for the, all of the songs almost like there's some sort of production element that relates to um 
to California by Phantom Planet. Right. Um, which you is want, a song we all you all love. use that as your walkout music, right? Or do you do that we every do. time? <laughs> we do, which is so was was perfect for the shows in California. Um, but almost like I feel like the people outside of California got the most hype to that song when we played it as our walkout song. Um, but yeah, we just we really love that song and and I think there's a lot of things that draw specifically from that time period and and things surrounding the OC, believe it or not. Um but yeah, I think like I said earlier, it might be in some more subtle subtle ways, I think. Um but I'm sure if you t if we talked to Henry, he would have direct lines to to all of it that he could tell you. <laughs> it, it's interesting. I know you're friends with uh, Rap Boys. Uh, coincidentally, Julia was my intern back in, I want to say 2010. No way. Yeah, like like so. I'm in Louisville, and and she's from here, and yeah. uh, and she was my intern on a on a previous show I had called The Weekly Feed, and and I got to talk. You know, we talked about Rap Boys' latest album too, and it's funny how because I know you all are, are like friends to a certain degree, but how in sync you both are at this moment in time with the OC and with Death Cab and and everything Ben Gibbard. It's something you know it's it's that 20 year cycle right just something in the air at this moment yeah totally oh we love we love rat boys and the album they put out this year was seriously one of our favorites um i'm really glad you brought them up because yeah they're they're great would love to be we both live in chicago but i feel like we never run into each other we're probably all we're both on tour so much and our schedules are just complete opposite i feel like but yeah big shout out to rat boys for sure yeah. It's not like it's a small town Chicago, but uh That's true. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> it's not like you. Um it was yeah, you got me thinking a little bit more because I think whatever interview I was reading that you were talking about some of that, you know, it got into you saying that you don't actually listen to music on tour, which makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Because I, I, I remember being in a tour van and and I think we listen to comedy albums uh, just about more than anything. At, at, yeah. But with the OC, I mean that comes around. Like, uh, like what, what, what's keeping you company these days? If I don't mean that to be on the spot question, but I feel like, you know, if it, if it's not music, is there some? Is it a TV show? What is it that keeps you company? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm I'm really into <laughs> what's what's been funny is um, instead of listening to music, I've been really into reading musical autobiographies. Um, and a favorite one that I, that I, one of my favorite ones that I just finished reading on this past tour um, is an autobiography from Lush's Mickey Brunny. And it was written so well, and it was just such a cool um, way to kind of talk about the music industry too in the 90s amidst all the Britpop boy boy band frenzy and kind of like when the death of shoegaze happened in in uh the uk in the in the late 90s um and you know her take on it and uh yeah her voice is just so incredible so i feel like i've been doing doing that when i'm on tour um and i think some of my bandmates have as well i think that henry uh just read dave grohl's book <laughs> at the same time which were such different you know juxtapositions of kind of the same time period which is just kind of interesting but um yeah I think I've been doing that um when I'm home I just adopted a beagle this past summer oh. so I've been big dog dog time um a lot of noise comes out of a little beagle well she actually doesn't bark which is strange um she was well she was a um lab beagle so she was actually tested on in a research facility um and so maybe she has something wrong with her. but yeah, she's I will great say, now <laughs> yeah i'll say we we got a rescue uh, a few oh, years really? ago yeah and um she's uh she's half um half doberman half rottweiler and um but she looks like a little sausage oh. and uh but she did she the same yeah. thing she didn't bark <laughs> for a long time and it was just getting familiar with her surroundings kind of a thing, you know? It it took her a while. And then one day she's like, all right, here's my voice. Now you get to hear it. Yeah. You know, it, it just took that little bit longer. Exactly. I'm sure one of these days she'll start 
doing the beagle howl and you know then i'll be real happy when that comes <laughs> around well i i do gotta ask on the biographies because uh you know as the story goes with yard you go to the cabin there's the lucinda williams essence cd there which i love lucinda she's been on the show a lot of times um, uh, her entire catalog have you read her biography that came out last year yet <gasps> no I didn't even it's know that fantastic. existed. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to order it as soon as we uh, get off this call. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's it's such a great read. But that was great. Like, I don't know, like Lucinda is one of the greatest singer songwriters of all time. She oh, doesn't always absolutely. get mentioned a lot um, outside of, you know, just pure Americana and everything. But, but knowing the influence that she had on your songwriting and those moments that do sort of go Americana... I mean, do you find that that's a different muscle at all for you as a songwriter? Does it does it feel as different as it eventually sounds? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think with with my songwriting, <laughs> this is going to sound so silly, but I think I try to think about as little as possible, at least in the initial phases of of writing. So, in terms of intentionality of of making a song sound a certain way right off the bat I think I try to let that be pretty loose and um when I'm first writing I think just is whatever is going to come out is going to come out and I kind of let that guide what's going to happen next and again Henry who produces Slow Pulp I think is so good at hearing some of my original demos and original versions and understanding what direction it needs to go in and i think some of the songs that ended up a bit more americana or a bit more um kind of stripped down kind of stayed in that in that zone just because it felt so right to what was at the kind of core of the song um and i really love listening to the music especially when i'm up by myself in northern Wisconsin and having that kind of introspective, uh, very visceral, very raw kind of emotive time. And it just fits with that emotion so well. And um, yeah, I mean, and, and I think also production wise and some of the other songs um, that might lean a bit more pop, I think there's this still kind of desolate dryness that we try to figure out um, that relates to a lot of Lucinda Williams' work. Um, and yeah, we're we're all just so inspired by her and she just seems like an amazing person too. I would love to get to meet her. She's fun to talk with and she's definitely got the stories to, to you know. To oh, I'm sure. Control. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about the bigger rock moments and of course, Doubt, such a great single. And that do, do, do chorus, will be stuck in everybody's <laughs> head forever and ever and ever. I'm, I'm certain uh, of that. <laughs> that's, um, you know, the, the idea of doubt, the idea of the uncertainty and the anxiety, you know, that kind of permeates through the, uh, through the album and everything. I mean, from the outsider, from the listener point of view, it's, it's really interesting to hear about that, knowing that you're a front person on a stage in front of a crowd. Is that... How does it work for you? Is it a compromise you make with yourself? Do you is it disassociation? I mean, like knowing how all of that, like how how does that work for you? Yeah, I think it it really comes in waves. Um, I think historically I've had a really hard time accepting the title of an artist. I've I've spent so much time feeling like I don't deserve to call myself that, or that you know I'm not good enough, or I'm not X Y Z, and um, it's funny, I had a conversation with a friend a couple of years ago when we were playing a show in LA and we got drinks before the show and I was kind of opening up to her about how much I was struggling to kind of believe in myself and have this inner confidence. And she was so surprised because she was like, you have, you know, you seem so sure of yourself on stage and you seem so confident. <laughs> and I kind of at that moment was taken aback because I think I'd realized I'd gone into this autopilot mode of um you know kind of fronting like I knew what I was doing and 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 disassociation is a perfect word to kind of associate with that um and I think I could just like to this zone 
And I've been a performer kind of my whole life. I grew up as a ballet dancer. My dad's a musician. And um, so I used to perform with him as a kid. And um, so I think I, I learned pretty young how to put on this facade of, of, of confidence, I guess. And um, luckily, as time has gone on, I've done a lot of work to try really hard to, to find that inner trust and inner belief. And, um, and that's where, I mean, it comes into waves, you know, we all, it's, I, I feel so much better than I did a few years ago, which is amazing, but we all, you know, dip back into past versions of ourselves as we're healing and as we're growing and as we're learning and, um, trying to give myself grace for those moments as well. But, um, I think anyone who's an artist probably can relate to, you know, I think for so long, I was so deep in my own psyche about how I was the only one experiencing this feeling. And, and the more you talk to people, or maybe even the more you read about other artists, it's such a common, common experience. And um, yeah, I wish I had just given myself space as a younger person to be more exploratory and be more um, kind to myself. But I, I do feel um, really excited. I feel like this album, um, I worked through so many of those feelings while working on this album. And I think for the first time as, as we embark on working on the third record, I feel so much more genuinely confident in myself. So I'm, I'm just excited to see what we are able to create when we're a little bit more sure of ourselves, a little bit, um, less afraid, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, what you said at the beginning about <clears throat> not believing that you're an artist and, and that specific word. It's, it, it, you know, and, and it is, it's it's hearing about the legends because because I don't know if you, like when, when I hear, you know, when I hear Pixies, you know, like Monkey Gun, yeah. never in my life would I have thought, even when I was younger, that, you know, you have four musicians toiling around trying to make a song work and messing around and building it up and, you know, and there's, discarded stuff and and then eventually you have this because because when you hear it when you're young it just arrives right fully formed and here it is and it was gifted of down and, yeah. and you're and you're and you are a god you're a legend and then the more you talk to people i think it was les claypool who said you know every song is just jamming around till it works jamming around until right. it sounds <laughs> right. good and it feels good i mean you watch the beatles documentary with get back and there exactly. they are just you know and you're like oh god you're almost there we know it's almost there <laughs> But I feel like right. that's the weight off of everybody's shoulders, you know, it's it just because of what at that point, it just becomes about the tools that you pick up along the way, because you get it to a certain point, and then the tools come in, then you're an artist, like, that's it. Right. Like, is that too? Right. <laughs> I know. And and I think I've had this realization that even the, the best of the best, nobody knows what they're doing when they start. Nobody knows what's going to happen. <laughs> and right. I think, yeah, the Beatles documentary is one that um, us as a band have talked a lot about and watched together to some of the some of the episodes that they're just spending so much time just, you know, being laborious and working through something and and um, messing around, too. I think they're just doing stuff for fun, which is so easy to forget when you have a thing that you're supposed to make or a deadline or whatever it may be that it's um, at the core of things just supposed to be just trying things and having having fun <laughs> being silly so um because i think at its nature creation is silly and being creative and being artistic is is can be very serious and and, and deal with very serious subject matter but um it's such a gift to be able to to do it in the first place um but yeah, that, that documentary was awesome. And then you have moments where you see Paul McCartney just sit down at a piano and he just, it all comes out at once. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he, it you know, takes days and days and days and days and days and years to, to get to that point or to have those moments. Um, and that's like kind of the reason why you keep doing it. Right. Because you have those epiphanies and you have those um, kind of perfect timed things. But um I'm also, yeah, it's also fun finding the stuff that just takes time. Mm -hmm. But like, did I read like a Gone 2 uh, on this record? Like there's an earlier version of that 
And there is that right? Like a completely different version. There is, yeah. Yeah. Completely like do you have a lot of those. Version. Um. Yeah. Well, not not like that one. That one was definitely a very specific case. I think. Um, we had a version that was pretty much finished, and it just didn't feel right with the emotion of the song. Um, and the day before we were supposed to turn the record in, we completely <laughs> re-recorded it, which was kind of crazy. Um, but I think sometimes, yeah, sometimes we'll get to the finish line or what we feel like is the finish line with the song. And um, it doesn't quite feel right. And we have to strip it back to kind of what it was in the beginning, which usually it tends to be like acoustic guitar and vocals and then kind of work it from there. Um, and and yeah, that, that song, I think by the time that one was finished again, we were kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's go for it. Um, but I'm really happy with how that one turned out. And um, yeah, there's there's actually a really funny story for that song because as we were recording it, trying to figure out what we wanted it to sound like, we had the music video for the Red Hot Chili Peppers "Scar Tissue" on, but on silent, like the song wasn't playing. <laughs> it was just the music video, and it was this. It's this desert landscape, and they're all dried out. And they're driving this old convertible, and um, yeah, we just wanted the song to sound like how that video looks. <laughs> Nicely done. I like the. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like knowing that. But seriously, there's so many great moments all through this record, and you know, it's slugs. I love. I love that track too, and just what you guys going. But it's great to see people finding it. Like I said, seeing this album showing up so many times you know, over the past few weeks, especially with those year-end lists. You know, I. It feel, I know it can feel different in it, but do you feel the success that's coming your way right now? Uh, yes. I mean, I feel, I, I, we all feel very proud and very just, you know, like you said earlier in, in this conversation, you don't know what's going to happen when you put out a record and you can't predict anything. And I think when we made this record, it was just really about being honest with ourselves and with each other and, and hoping for the best. And, um, you know, is it the best record ever made? Absolutely. Not even close. Is it the best record I think we've made? Yeah. And that's all you can kind of hope for when you're working on something. And, um, I, yeah, I, I'm very proud of it and I'm very just so grateful that people are engaging with it and, um, kind of taking it, for themselves I think that that's for me the highest compliment when somebody you know puts their own life experiences and stories onto your songwriting and um and it seems that people are are really resonating which is just the best thing the best outcome um possible for us so yeah thank you to anyone listening and in, into this interview and thank you for for listening to the record and and supporting us along our our little journey yeah and uh i'm gonna keep doing that i can speak for myself and again uh, <laughs> i love yard i cannot wait to see you guys on tour though especially especially with this uh, and i know the opening slot it's so different you know you don't get to stretch out and everything but uh, i'm excited to see you guys with death cab and uh and uh, postal service but uh be catching some uh some headlining shows as well emily congratulations thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this Thank you for taking the time and, and listening to the record and, and hanging out. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.